Why would you ever want to disable Windows Defender, your antivirus installed on your Windows computer? Well, there are a couple different reasons. Uh, you might be doing things for security research. You might be learning penetration testing. You might be studying red teaming. You might be digging into vulnerabilities and exploits and just trying to learn more. And in that case, it can be handy to try and remove Defender and get it out of your way for the things that you're testing and experimenting with. I agree that there isn't normally a use case for this because, hey, if you're running an organization, if you've got a business, a company, something that you want to keep these machines secure, as you should, your antivirus should be on and Windows Defender is a fine candidate for that. But in this video, I want to show you how you can remove a Defender and get it out of your way for virtual machines or for sandboxes that you are practicing and playing offensive security in. Let's dive in. Before we get started, let me add the disclaimer that this is certainly not my own original idea. This is from another great researcher and great sysadmin over in the Netherlands. I believe his name is Rudy. Um, and this is online at lazyadmin.nl. You can track down, hey, Windows 11 turning off Windows Defender permanently. Now, I know that, hey, when you're playing and pen testing around and doing some shady stuff, you might see Defender turn itself back on even after you've turned it off. And that can be a little bit annoying. Hey, even if you've got tamper protection out of the way, it it still comes back to life magically some way or another. So this will show you, here's how to hardcore kill this thing. And this is all explained in this article. Give Want to give credit where credit is due. Uh, he's really showcasing the great stuff here. And if you have more interest in reading this, I'll drop that link in the description. You can certainly go through this. But if you want to just watch it, see how it happens, that's what this video is for. Rudy does showcase this exact problem. Hey, you might turn off real-time protection through the GUI or the settings, but it will just automatically turn back on. So here's how we can nerf this thing for real. Okay, so I'm working in my Windows 11 virtual machine that I've created in some previous videos. I am going to be working out of the local admin account rather than the low privilege user account. So to start us off here, I do want to show us the current and active settings of Defender. It is on and working by default. So if I go ahead and open up the start menu, check out the virus and threat protection settings, open this up here, you can see, hey, protection is enabled. It is not really needed to make any changes. It's all on green checkboxes all the way around, no current threats, but it has been scanning and doing its thing as it needs to. So we can verify that. Let me go ahead and open up a PowerShell session and I will run the command that will normally trigger uh, AMSI or that anti-malware scan interface. I'll go ahead and try and invoke emicats. I don't even have emicats installed. I don't have it set up on this box. Normally it would get an error as we'll see later, but AMSI and Windows Defender will try and snarf it up because it says, hey, this script contains malicious content and has been blocked by your antivirus software. Defender's doing its thing. If we want to triple check that, let me go snag an iCar file. If you aren't familiar, an ICAR file is the standard test file for antiviruses that everything should be able to detect and send the alarms and bells and whistles all after because, hey, we've decided as a community that's the standard. This is known bad and that it's just a testing file to trigger antivirus. Let me Google ICAR test file. Here we go. All right, let's scroll down on icar.org. Go ahead and download this icar.com. Yep, I know Ed isn't going to want to play with it. That's A-OK. -okay. Let's go ahead and save this file. I'll slap it on my desktop. There we go. Uh, if I try to open it, oh, operation did not complete successfully because it contains a virus or potentially unwanted software. And you can see Defender was like, nope, not going to let that happen. And if I refresh yet again, I believe that should be nerfed and killed and eaten by Defender soon enough. Cool. You can see the protection history, and you can see that it did block one of these previous ones. Yep, let's go see what that is. And that was uh, PowerShell trying to run Mimi Cats just a moment ago, and our iCar test file. Obviously, now we want to see if we can disable or remove or kill Defender. First things first, we're going to want to boot into safe mode. We can do that super duper easily by opening up msconfig, running it in the run dialog box. I hit the Windows key and R on my keyboard, but you could just find that, hey, through the start menu if you want to click on some of those. Uh, that is all that you should end up needing to do. What we'll end up doing is we'll switching into the boot tab, and then we'll grab the safe boot option and go ahead and keep minimal as a default. You can hit apply hit OK, and then it says, hey, you'll need to restart your computer to apply these changes before restarting, save any files, blah, blah, blah. We can go ahead and restart. Okay, I'm booted back into safe mode. Uh, while this is cruising through here, I do want to add the note, hey, I don't really think this is a viable thing that a remote threat actor could do. So I wouldn't be concerned, oh, hackers or attackers could bypass or kill Defender with this method. Cruising into safe mode and doing some of this next shenanigans I don't think is really feasible. Uh, hey, from a that 
targeted perspective of, oh, I'm brute forcing by RDP or I'm fishing an individual. You don't really have all that access to cruise into safe mode as you normally would uh, being physically or looking at the machine with your own eyes, right? Uh, I do think this is still worthwhile and something good to do for your own lab environment or your virtual sandbox where you get to practice and play and learn. So I'm going to hit the Windows key and R yet again so I can open up the file explorer and I'm going to navigate to C program data, Microsoft, it's Windows Defender. There, I can see it as a second result. Excellent. Okay, and I'm going to go check out this platform folder. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and right click on this platform folder, check out the properties, and I'm going to open up this security portion here, and I'm going to go into the advanced settings. Now I'm gonna try and take ownership of this folder by changing the owner. Uh, right now it is currently system, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit that change button and type in administrators. I'll hit uh, enter on that and now it'll notice, okay, everything in my local computer, this is the host name, desktop L31M0V1, uh, administrators will be the owner of this folder. Now I'll go ahead and remove all of the previous owners noted here other than my own administrators group. And I'm gonna hit this replace all child object permission entries with inheritable permissions entries from this object. And I can go ahead and change the owner to be kind of recursive down, replace owner on all the sub containers and objects within this directory. If I go ahead and click apply, there we go. This will replace explicitly defined permissions on all descendants of the object. Do you want to continue? Yes, I do. You have just taken ownership of the object. You'll need to reopen the, um, the object properties before you can view or change permissions. So we'll go ahead and click OK. I'll hit OK once more to close out of that. And just to verify, I will double check these properties here, move into the security tab. And if I check out the advanced, it looks like it is still owned by myself, the administrators. Uh, trusted installer has been removed and we can bounce out of here. Now the article suggests one other alternative method to try and remove Defender within Windows 11 and modern versions of Windows operating systems, and that is cruising through the registry. We can do the very, very same. I think it's good to just do that while we're here in safe mode because, hey, we got the power. So since we are in safe mode, I will hit Windows key and R yet again to run, open up the run dialog box, and I'll open the Windows registry editor. And here I will navigate into HK local machine system, current control set, services. And you'll want to go through and change some of these to have their startup value set to a unique specific D word or 32-bit value. We need sense, there it is. Change that start value to the number four. Hit okay on that. Let's do the same with WD boot, Windows Defender here. Changing that to a four. I need WD filter. I need WD NIST drive, WD NIST service just beneath it, and finally Win Defend down here. With that, we should be all set. The registry changes have been made. We have taken ownership of it. Okay, and now that that is all set, I'm going to open up MS Config one more time with Windows key and R, and we can go ahead and change this back for the boot settings. Do not use safe mode or safe boot because we want to get back to a regular full desktop environment. It says, hey, you may need to restart your computer to apply these changes. Yep, totally cool. We do want to go ahead and restart. Okay, now that we are booted up and logged back in, we should be able to go ahead and check out our virus and security center here, the threat protection portion here. And this notion of our real-time protection is just kind of dead. It's got this, hey, getting protection info infinite loop here. It's going to try and load, but it never particularly will because we've nerfed it out uh, inside of safe mode. And I'll show that to you super duper quick. If I actually open up PowerShell, I'll zoom in on this. If I tried to invoke Mimikatz, something that would regularly trigger AMSI or that anti-malware scan interface, normally you get the message, oh, you probably saw it before, hey, this contains unwanted or malicious software. However, now it's just going to tell us, hey, that's not recognized as the name of a commandlet function or a path. Uh, you probably are not doing what you wanted to because how you think you're making a mistake, it's a command not found, right? But that means that Defender didn't try and snarf it. It didn't eat it because Defender is dead. We've nerfed it and we've killed it. If we wanted to, we can go grab an iCar file. Let me grab an iCar test file. There we go. We can go ahead and download this one here. Here it is on iCar.org. We'll go ahead and grab this iCar.com. And, okay, Edge is actually whining about it. Hey, just do it anyway. 
There we go. Here is our standard iCar file. I'm just going to slap this in the desktop. Uh, it looks like no issues whatsoever. We're able to download that. Obviously, we can't particularly run it because it's not legitimate, you know, but our antivirus did not trigger it. Windows Defender has been put to bed and we no longer have to worry about him. With that, we have killed and removed Windows Defender, and it is not in our way for our own testing, our own sandbox environment, where you or I or we might go ahead and do some pen testing, red teaming, playing with offensive security, looking through vulnerabilities and exploits. This is something that I tend to do on all of my virtual machines that I know I'm going to be doing some of that shady stuff on. Uh, I'll just create this process and mark it as a snapshot so I can always get back to it alongside my VMware tools or tools that I've wanted to install. Uh, if I know I'm going to be up to that stuff, hey, I'll kill Defender and leave it as a checkpoint that I can revert back to. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hey, please go check out that article and give the original creator, Rudy, some love. Uh, but if you wanted to support this channel, hey, you know, like, comment, subscribe, etc. Thanks so much, everybody. I'll see you in the next one.